Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre. If you're looking to learn more about aquaculture, you're in the right place. Hi guys, and welcome back to our channel. I'm super excited to introduce Emily Warren. Today we're going to be discussing her current research project on sea urchins with potential of aquaculture. So Emily, you are currently completing your master's at University of Victoria. You research is your research, sorry, is focused on different diets on gonad enhancement and uh, fecal production in the green and red sea urchin. Uh, can you kind of tell us a little bit about your goal for this project? Yeah, definitely. So I'll give a little bit of background information first. So I'm based off Vancouver Island in BC. And so in the waters around the island in Northern California, the sea urchins are overpopulated, mainly due to a lack of predators in the area. So for example, the sea otters. And this is a problem seen around the world um, where these masses of sea urchins will just move into kelp forests and just eat everything, creating these urchin barrens, which are completely devoid of kelp and just are sort of like rocky ecosystems. And the masses of urchins will stay in these areas, preventing the regrowth of kelp. Um, so the part of the urchin you eat is their roe, also called uni, which is considered a delicacy. And since their roe is considered the main organ for nutrient storage, what they eat directly relates to the size and quality of the product produced. And so when the urchins are in these barrens with no food, they have very poor quality roe and will not be removed by the dive fishery. Um, so aquaculture is then a method to remove these um, adult urchins from the barren grounds, feeding them for eight to 12 weeks um, to produce a market quality product. And then are also allowing the kelp tree grow in the area. So my specific project was looking at two newly formulated prepared diets, which were provided by Urchinomics and Bull Kelp, as well as three different uh, water temperatures, which are commonly found around Vancouver Island, to try and find the optimal growing conditions for a row enhancement operation with green and red urchins. And then for the fecal side of it, we were looking at production, settling rates, and ingestion rates just to um, kind of collect that preliminary data to used to assess the potential environmental impact if we were to scale up to a commercial operation. Wow, that's cool. I, I clearly I didn't realize that the bro was the, the part you eat. Um, yeah. That's that's definitely interesting. I mean, I've never ate. Um, I was talking to a girl about sea cucumbers, like I've never been able to eat sea cucumbers or eat sea urchins. Um, kind of sidetracked here, like have you gotten the like opportunity to eat uh, the row from a sea urchin? I've only done it twice and not any from my study, which probably isn't good for studying them. I need to do it more, but <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> no, that's that's completely yeah. fair. I think that's not something commonly heard about, uh, especially in Canada. Um, so the sea urchins are captured and fed with prepared like natural diets to increase their yield and make them marketable. Can mm -hmm. you tell me why they are captured? I know you kind of briefly touched upon like the background of the benefits it brings to um, the beds and stuff like that, but do you want to kind of go into that a bit more? Yeah, definitely. So as I did mention, they are overpopulated and will destroy these kelp beds that are around, well, just around the world in general. Um, so removing the urchins will allow the kelp to regrow and kelp is a very important ecosystem shelter nursery including it is a food source um, acts as a carbon sink helps lower ocean acidification and buffer wave erosion so they're just really important ecosystems to keep around no for sure i i i mean i don't know much about uh that whole situation especially on the co coast i have only been to the east coast and stuff like that um but that's, I mean, I know that's definitely important for the aquaculture side of things and making the row better, but also like improving the natural environment for sure. Um, so that being said, I know you're talking about having these sea urchins in aquaculture facilities to grow, make sure the row is marketable, but do you also breed sea urchins in captivity? Is that possible? It is possible. I haven't done it. So there are kind of two um, avenues of urchin aquaculture, which people do. And the first is the full life cycle grow out which would require broodstock spawning of adult urchins and like raising the urchin from larvae to adult and then producing the row that way, which is time consuming. It would take quite a few years to get them up to market size. Um, compared to if you're just doing row enhancement, you can fish the adults from the wild and just feed them for eight to 12 weeks. You kind of both options there in an aquaculture scenario. Interesting. I know you said a couple of years, do you know, uh, maybe like a more specific number of the years, just like offhand? I don't remember exactly. I think for the green urchins, it's about two or more. For the reds, though, I mean, they're the largest species of sea urchin in the yeah. world. 
and they can get huge, so it'd be quite a few years for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's completely fair. Um, so for the growth in the aquaculture industry, like research needed to improve productivity, um, like sea urchin aquaculture is a new industry. Um, how will your research uh, benefit and impact uh, this industry? Yeah, so with these uh, prepared diets, we were actually able to achieve a market um, quality product in terms of color, texture, and taste. Um, which is great for both um, species. And so there's been a lot of previous studies done in the past looking at different prepared diets and different like things to feed them. And it's been very hard to get that kind of taste requirement as well as the bright yellow orange color. Um, but yes, with these diets, we're able to get that, so which is great. And so obviously knowing that these diets work, the next step is so you can scale up and commercialize and start looking at the economic side of things of whether it'd be a feasible operation in the future. That's awesome. I mean, like, especially for your research to get the success out of it, like, that's exciting because, you know, you yes. put a lot of your time into the research you do. So that's a big win for you guys. Um, speaking of your research and all the time you put into it, like, what made you want to study uh, the this project? Sorry. Definitely. Um, sea urchins are just really cool. But um, I just found that kind of the interconnectedness between, like, urchins and kelp and well, otters too, and just the really balanced system you need to have like a healthy ocean. And just one of those things gone can really throw it out of whack. Um, and so just this like category of aquaculture kind of falls into this like ecologically restorative aquaculture side of things, which just combines like my passion for aquaculture, but also marine biology and conservation. And you can just using aquaculture to help like maintain and restore healthy ecosystems, I find really fascinating. Yeah, I, I mean, that was like one of the big reasons why I wanted to start uh, these like videos because aquaculture is not just about like food production. I mean, there's so many really cool things and aspects that are happening in this industry. And um, I mean, I say this almost every video I do, but like I didn't really know a lot about aquaculture until I ended up here. And I was like, there is so much stuff yeah. out there that I don't think maybe people talk about enough. So um, when kind of COVID hit, I was like, let's create, you know, like let's get Instagram going and let's maybe start up a YouTube channel and, you know, share what research uh, like master students and PhD students are looking at right now and, you know, opening like education and research and food production and where, you know, aquaculture is currently sitting and like where mm -hmm. we're going and, exactly what you're saying it's like what your project is is like aquaculture and conservation and like marine biology and it's like all coming together which is super super interesting and fun yeah, for sure there's a lot going on anyways that people are doing it's really cool <laughs> yeah so your study is looking to improve row production as you mentioned but is there any other market for sea urchin um as far as I know anyways there isn't it's really only the row or uni which is marketable because that's the edible part they're okay. really yeah not much else going on in sea urchins <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> um kind of like another side note um I'm very curious uh, like how would you like use the row like how would you dress a meal with row yes yeah, so there's actually a lot of options um the main one I've seen is just on sushi you can order it in a sushi restaurant um seasonally and it's just kind of like just like a little yellow lobe that they lay on rice. But I follow a couple of Instagram accounts that like market uni and that. You can make like pasta sauces, like cream sauces with it and just a bunch of different things. And wow, that's so it on toast, like <laughs> really cool. Uh, that's super interesting. What uh, kind of season is roe normally marketed at? Yeah, it just depends on the species. It's okay. kind of right before their spawning period is like the peak quality. So it does vary for the species and area. Okay, perfect. Um, that's kind of all I have for you today. I don't know if you have anything to add. If you do, um, if you don't, that's fine. I just wanted to thank you, Emily, for joining me today to discuss your research and the positive effects has on the, like the marine and the conservation and the effects it has in the aquaculture industry. And um, yeah, thank you so much. No, oh, awesome. Thank you for having me. It was great. Hey guys, I hope you liked the video today. If you did, please swim on over and hit the like button and subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions you want answered in any of our future videos. Hope to see you next time.